Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome back to Path of Exile. I decided to do another video on this particular game because it's been a while since I did one and there have been a number of interesting advances with this forthcoming Diablo-like free-to-play title. Yes, I did just say free-to-play. It's definitely got this Diablo 2 vibe about it. The pseudo-realistic graphic style, a lot of grim dark stuff. This is actually one of the brightest areas in the game so far and it's got a bunch of dead people in it, so... It's, it's, it's not a nice game. It's certainly captured the feeling of hopelessness that Diablo 2 had in abundance. Now, this is a brand new class. This is the first video footage of said class. The class in question is called the Shadow, and it's supposed to be a hybrid dexterity int class, which sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? It's a hit-and-run, lightly armored class, Kind of thiefy, kind of roguey, but also with quite a lot of magical abilities and sneaky sort of stuff. So, in the case of the Shadow, got a lot of different traps available. Now, you might wonder, well, why do you only have one trap on your bar there? Because, those of you who watched the previous Path of Exile video, or just familiar with the Path of Exile system, will know about these little things, which are gems. Yeah? All skills in the game come from gems, one way or the other. These gems can be freely removed from a weapon, placed into another weapon or a piece of armor, leveled up and traded with people. So this is a level 4 fire trap gem. It's pretty much the first skill that I acquired by completing the first quest. And a lot of your gems are going to be coming from quests. Apparently some of the really rare ones can be found out in the wilderness and so on and so forth. And of course you can just trade for them as well. Now... While this class is primarily focused on melee, I've actually gone for ranged here simply because I found a really good bow and a really good quiver. So the amount of damage I can inflict here is ridiculous. It's not to say that you can't do this. In fact, that the game's actually very flexible and I didn't get a chance to show you the last time this thing. Yeah, welcome to Spear Grid 5.0. Those of you who've played Final Fantasy X should be pretty familiar with what this system is. It's a giant sphere grid. In this case, they call it the web. And you can get any skill in the game as any class. But it does require some fairly ridiculous time to do so. In this case, for instance, you'll see this is the shadow. Yeah, This is where you start. This is the starting point as the shadow. And it's going to tell you what the different stats do. For instance, in this case... Dexterity is a big stat for the Shadow, as you might imagine. Intellect, not so much a secondary stat, but certainly fairly important. And then Strength, not so important. But you can still use that stat one way or the other. You then, every time you level up, gain these passive skill points that can be put into various different attributes. In this case, I started on attack speed. I could have gone plus 10 Dexterity. In fact, I may still grab that because it's well worth it. And then there's a nice little orb there with a bunch of different evasion that might be worth having attack speed down there and things start to get very very complicated very very easily and uh, i decided to go in this direction attack speed through to movement speed then projectile damage to support my bow then i got acceleration this is a major one you see anything that looks large yeah it's going to give you a big buff in this case plus 30 to dexterity and plus 12 percent attack speed useful regardless of whether or not i decide to use one-handed weapons which is where this is going here or if I decide to use ranged weapons, which is what I've currently got right now. I also picked up every point I could get in this somewhat smaller orb here, which has got traps in. Yeah? Because this is very, very much trap orientated. So I will show you some. God, that is just, that's intimidating, isn't it? It really, really is. It's not as scary as it looks, really. It's just a case of, hey, let's level down the path and... Look at what's there and see the kind of skills that we want to get. Honestly, it makes sense as you go along and you can build your class around what you start to enjoy doing the most. In this case, it's for me, it's ranged combat and laying traps. So I like to lay traps around the place, kind of like this, and then kite my opponents through it all the while, unleashing a deadly volley of arrows from my extremely good magical bow. I've also got this. If I decide to do any kind of magical range damage, I can do that. I've been leveling up Spark, which is good for bouncing around large groups of enemies at high range. And I've also got Phase Run. This is a shadow-specific skill alongside Fire Trap. Phase Run lets me run around for a little while. Less aggro, so monsters may not notice me. And if I happen to be using melee weapons, I'd actually get essentially a backstab bonus 
while I was in phase run. I'm not using melee weapons at the moment, but it might be handy later. Now, this area right here is prison, and I'm told by the developers that this is a new area that most people probably haven't seen before in the alpha version of this game. So, let's go and have a look-see, shall we? I'll show you the combat. The combat should be very, very familiar to pretty much everybody, because at the end of the day, it is very similar to Diablo 2. And it's blindingly obvious that that's what they were going for here. They were looking for the same kind of aesthetic as Diablo 2. They were looking for the same kind of combat as Diablo 2. Because many people were saying, and I don't know how much I agree with this, that Diablo 3 departs too much from the aesthetic of the original game. And it also just isn't quite as good. Again, I haven't played enough of it to make that judgment, so I'd rather just focus on this one, quite frankly. But the combat in this is really solid. This is not usually my kind of game, honestly. Generally speaking, I find these games just a little bit dull in terms of their actual combat style. They're just a bit too repetitive. And I would say that, you know, this, this game's repetitive as well in exactly the same way. I don't think there's really any easy way to escape that in this style of game. If you're not into the whole repetitive combat, killing a bunch of stuff and getting a lot of loot, then this game's not going to be for you regardless of what changes they actually make. But what I will say is that the combat feels nice and meaty. It's nice if I attack something with arrows, the arrows actually stick in them. If I miss, they stick into the wall as well. Got a nice sense of impact there. And you've also got a lot of AoE, which is really, really satisfying in a game like this. I think people realize that they want to kill large groups of enemies. And the way to do that would, of course, be to use a lot of AoEs. All right. Okay, so we've got a little mini boss in there. Might make things a little bit more tricky. Let's just try and pick off his friends first. Set down a couple of traps. Well, he's melee. That's good. I'll have him walk through all of my traps. I can then phase run to get in a better position and just open fire from here. Traps do take a little bit of time to recharge. They do also use mana as well. Now, you may also notice there's a bunch of flasks down the bottom. This is a really interesting system, in my opinion. They have got the potion popping system of previous similar games, but these actually refill as you kill monsters, and they all have their own characteristics as well. So you can gain flasks that have different abilities and stats on them. For instance, this large flask, a catalyzed large flask of gluttony, has got some interesting stats on it. 50% increased recovery speed. This is really, really good, actually. And a life leech while the flask is in effect also gives me a large amount of health back. Same for mana flasks as well. This one is really, really good. If I want to apply this, then I suddenly become a hell of a lot more resilient for a very short period of time. So they provide these short-term buffs while also regenerating your health or mana. Nice little system there. Let's go and explore this prison just a little bit more. Map overlay is quite good. It took a little bit of getting used to, honestly. You can tab to do this big map overlay. There's no... As far as I can tell, there's no way to change the size of it. So some people might find it obnoxious. But personally, I find it very, very handy. Once you get used to the fact that it's on your screen, it's really easy to read. Initially, it was very confusing. But it didn't take me too long to figure it out. I'm level 9 at the moment. This took me eh, two and a half hours of play, really, to get to. And this is also the level that they recommended just to check out this kind of area. And what I'm seeing so far of the Shadow is quite nice, honestly. I don't think I really have the full potential of it because I've decided to go down a kind of ranged path. It, it's not impossible to play at ranged, though, actually, at all, because of the emphasis on traps. You just have to get en enough trap gems to make it worthwhile. The problem is I don't really have enough trap gems. I've just got the fire trap at the moment. We're going to switch most likely to another character shortly to show you a more melee-orientated shadow, which has got a few different nice abilities, the more kind of assassin-style roguey kind of thing that you are perhaps used to. The game is at this stage looking really polished and really promising. I know when I first saw it, it looked. I found the graphic style to be kind of ugly, but as I've gone along with it, I've come to realize that it really is this very grim, dark kind of style with a nice bit of Diablo 2 thrown in there for good measure. In fact, an awful lot of Diablo 2. Like if Diablo 2 was made today with exactly the same graphic style, it would probably look like this. Most likely pop back to town momentarily to sell some stuff. Selling, that's something interesting, because that wasn't actually in the alpha that I showed you. The currency system in this game is bizarre. Like, there aren't, there's no gold or anything like that. There's no coins. There are these currency items that are also used for other things. And they can be traded with vendors. 
and it's all based around drops as well. So if you gain one in the middle of the field, it's nice to grab one. These items over here are currency, as you can see. Armor are scraps. These can also be used to improve the quality of an army. See, they actually have inherent value. That's the curious thing about it. Gold only has value because it can be used to buy stuff in other games. This has value because it actually does something, which certainly, certainly in the early game is a bit confusing because you're like, oh, well, I don't want to sell this or I don't want to buy that because I need Scrolls of Wisdom to actually identify items. So they've set this currency standard based on these items that do have a use. It's interesting. I don't know how well it's going to work, honestly, but it's intriguing that they've decided to move away from the gold model, and a large majority of the reason for that, I have to imagine, is gold farming, to try and get rid of some of that. But there are other reasons, like managing the idea of mudflation, for instance, and things like that. They also made the argument that this pretty much happens in a lot of games anyway. I think Stones of Jordan, for instance, were used as trade currency in Diablo 2 because at one point, gold just became far, far too common. If you'll excuse me for a second, I'm now dealing with a hell of a lot of skeletons that try and fight this necromancer. This game doesn't pull any punches on it. You, you can die very, very easily in this game. You can take a lot of damage from very basic minions, and what's really mean about it is you can often find multiple monsters with these stacking auras and crazy abilities that turn into a hell of a lot of pain very, very fast for you. In this case, we seem to be doing all right, but I'm taking a lot of damage from his summons here, so I'm going to try and clear those out as well, just to make matters even sodding worse. Have I got him yet? No? Yes? Maybe? Is he down? Yes, he is. Oh, great. Fantastic. So we'll grab some items momentarily. And then I think we'll probably portal back to our little town area. Town area is pretty grim as well. In fact, the only happy thing in this entire world seems to be my bronze kiwi. Alright, my inventory is somewhat full. I can grab a couple of smaller items. Now, when it comes down to grabbing everything on the floor, you're going to rapidly find out that's not a very good idea because you won't be able to fit it in your inventory. You have to play a little bit of inventory Tetris sometimes to get what you need. When it comes down to common items, they all seem to sell for around the same. These fragments of scrolls which stack together to make scrolls of wisdom. And you can see these shards of alteration and transmutation which will morph together to become an orb eventually. So picking up the smaller items seems to be a really good way of doing things. Like rings, for instance, they're great because they only take up one spot in your inventory. But they usually sell for exactly the same amount as everything else. Now, I'm picking up things here manually. It doesn't... You don't need to do that. It will just automatically go into your inventory, but I'm about full, so you know what? I'm going to head back. So we're going to have a quick look at the town and the new currency system. Head on over to one of these vendors, Nessa or the other guy over there. He, he's essentially an armorer, and she sells some magical items and things like that. Now, this was a pretty good quality item but i can't wear it and it's le it's also level two as well so perhaps it's a little bit deceptive it's like oh magic well yeah but it's level two so can't really be that good it actually is pretty good by the looks of it it's got a lot of increased armor huge increase in strength as well that's a nice piece of chest plate that i will not use could trade it but of course i'm playing the alpha version there's barely anyone on this alpha server there is a beta running of this as well that's the thing the alpha server is used to test the new features and do some of the secret hidden stuff. All right, so I get 10 alteration shards from that if I sell it. So I could sell that. And what that's going to give me, that's stacked everything up and given me an orb of augmentation. I can enchant a magic item with a new random property. The question is, do I even have a magic item? These are yellows, the yellows. Yeah, I could apply it to that, actually. That's a good way to show it, I suppose. I have to take it out of my inventory first. I'm just going to sell the rest of this junk. Hmm. That's actually quite a nice weapon. And I might keep that for melee. So, you know, I'm not going to sell that, but I will sell that stuff. You can identify stuff before it sells. It's a bit of a gamble, from what I can tell, one way or the other. I seem to have quite a lot of scrolls of wisdom, so it might be useful. Hmm. That's nice. I'm half tempted, actually, just to keep these two weapons. I think I might, and then dual wield them and see how that goes. We'll get rid of the rest of the stuff, though. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. We don't need that either. This can go. 
you know what, I'm going to identify that before I sell it. Okay, that gives me a bunch of alteration shards. Very nice, very nice. Uh, that looks about it. Okay, so let's just vlog that. Right, let's play around with one of these orbs of augmentation, shall I? I'm going to augment my leather armor of the newt. Try and add a new magical property to it. Thorny leather armor of the newt. Reflects two physical damage back to melee attackers. Nice. I could also just swap around here and dual wield these knives if I like. We'll take the bow and arrow out of there. Swap for a rapier and a skinning knife. Now, any class can use any weapon. That's the weird thing. I could run around with dual wield wands as this guy if I want. Oh, it's not recommended, but I can do it anyway. The game doesn't really seem to care one way or the other, which is a little bit refreshing, honestly. I think we might end up using that, and I'm going to remove that bow for a second. Take this out, put it in there, swap it back in. Of course, this can go out of the way. I'll keep hold of it for the time being. And then we'll just do a little bit of melee, so I should be able to portal right back in there. Alright, cool. So I'm now doing melee attacks, which will be useful with phase run. Now I'm going to show you the other version of the shadow momentarily, just to show you a couple of different skills that you can gain access to with this, because I currently don't really have a lot of melee orientated skills. So it's not as ideal to actually show this off in this state. Just want to see if I can find any other interesting bosses here. I'll tell you what I have noticed actually in the nine levels is that there's a nice amount of variety in terms of the different areas you go into. I had a dungeon that was essentially a set of underwater caves where I fight a bunch of squid men and giant crabs. There's the beach areas. Even they look really, really grim. In fact, the mud flats was one of the most verdant areas that I went into, which was unexpected to say the least. Rather surprising. I think we've almost explored this prison by the looks of it. I was hoping there'd be a skeleton or something in here, or some kind of, well, a skeleton boss or some kind of chest or something like that to get. Maybe I've missed it, and that's a possibility as well. I'm just trying to keep an eye on the map at all times. Make sure that I explore all of these areas. A bit of stabby stabby. You know what? I I, I think I honestly preferred... I, I think maybe it's just because of the range of this thing. I, I'm using a skinning knife. It's got a really, really low range. I think I preferred ranged attacks. But really, that's cool that that's even there as an option. It's not going to punish me for deciding I want to use a bow. Which I definitely approve of. Get you out of the way. Thank you very much. You can go down too. He fires lightning arrows, because you know what? Why not? Why the hell not? A few more chests around here. Nothing so interesting, unfortunately. No, nope, looks like we might be fresh out of luck here. Ooh, there is a waypoint through there, though. Very, very useful. That'll let me teleport back to town whenever I please. Really sh have I already visited that? Can't recall. But whatever the case, you can see the prison there. You can also notice the rather nice shadow effect. It's a good looking game if you like this kind of graphic style. It's definitely not colourful or high fidelity. But it's got this nice grimy feel to it. Definitely approve of that. It's a bit creepy in places. Alright. I think we might be about done with this area. I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. I have this really curious urge to check out absolutely everything. Which is probably a gigantic waste of time. But you never know. There could be a big chest somewhere. Come on. Come on. You know, if you're going to be awkward, then I'm just going to switch back to the bow and arrow and smack you about with that. Quit that. Good lord. Also, I haven't taken my skill. There we go. There's the traps. Ooh. Swap that out. That. And... Greetings. Now you're going to regret it. There we go. Yeah, I have a feeling there's something down here. There's quite a few nasty creatures. What am I looking for? The map does sometimes get 
even now just a little bit confusing but these little yellow areas here tend to indicate some kind of gateway so that gives you a clue as to what's a another room and what's just a wall come on I know there's something in here I can smell it my loot sense is tingling oh hello some kind of necromancer, at least it was. I'm surprised arrows are so effective against skeletons. Come on, where are you? Where is the big loot monster? I bet there's one in here somewhere. I'm going to be very disappointed if I go through all of this and I don't find a big loot monster. That will be highly upsetting. By the looks of it, there might even be another level to this dungeon. Who knows? All I know is I'm finding a hell of a lot of enemies. And it's bloody dark in here. Thank you. There we go. This is the kind of enclosed space that would be ideal for some lightning. Uh huh. That's a swift one, right. So, that one was imbued with an additional magical property. Usually what I find is if you run into a lot of those guys, then you're getting close to a boss. Well, let's see what we can find. To you down. Thank you very much. I'm taking quite a lot of damage in here. As I said, the game doesn't muck around. It's just, it's hard from the start. And this is only on normal difficulty. There are, of course, two more difficulty levels after this. Those wondering if there's hardcore, yes, there is. There's essentially a hardcore league. Oh, hello. There you go, there's an evil skeleton dude. There's a hardcore league. When you die in a hardcore league, your character doesn't get deleted, but it gets moved out of the hardcore league, and you can't move back in, so... I guess that's an interesting compromise. War-style weapon. That was just a little mini-boss. I wonder if there's anything more interesting in here. I don't believe I've got a quest to go in here yet, but again, this is alpha content. There may not even be quests for this area yet, because it's very, very recent to go in. Usually the quests just seem to involve kill a boss monster, one way or the other. There doesn't seem to be a lot of variety in that regard. Although sometimes you just run into a quest when you're in an area. It's like, alright, you better do this then. Like, okay, no problem. And then go back to town and get given a skill gem or whatever. Alright, so this is a melee orientated shadow. I have bear trap and fire trap, ice spear and dual strike. I'll have a look at his gear. Not bad, using double claws by the looks of it. We also have a look at his skill set to see uh, what they've decided to spec him into. This was provided to me by the devs to have a look at. Alright, so he went down kind of the same path, but he took one-handed damage instead of range. Took the acceleration and then started grabbing things in this area. A lot of attack speed, basically focusing on one-handers and dual wielding. Which will take you down to evasion, energy shield stuff, more finesse and dexterity, all manner of different passives. All right, then. Sounds reasonable. I'm going to see if we can use a waypoint to get back to a reasonably difficult area. And yes, we can. We can go back to the rocky climb. And then we can try this guy out. Somewhat different style of play. All right, so this is about punching people. You can still lay traps, of course, but it is mostly about punching people. And I'm bleeding hard, and I'm going to die. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, these guys don't muck about. Not at all. I'm going to lay a bear trap down there as well. Bear traps seem to be really, really good for big, strong enemies. Not so good for large groups. That's what the fire traps are for. The interesting thing about the skill system for this, by the way, is so-called supporting gems. Now, I'm not, I don't think I have any supporting gems. I think you get those much, much later on in the game. But the idea of supporting gems is you can link gems together. You see there's actually a link there. I don't believe that actually helps one way or the other, because they're not that's not a support gem. But you can add different properties to existing skills. Like the shadow can create all sorts of different traps and remote mines for all manner of different skills that would otherwise not be traps and remote mines. A nice curious amount of customization. Diablo 3 does have a system. I wouldn't say that it's similar, but it's got the same kind of goal to it. You've got attribute gems that can apply to different skills and that. So actually, it is kind of similar. Supporting gems have been around for a while. So has Diablo system. I don't even 
want to speculate as to who copied who. And honestly, I don't even care either. It doesn't even matter. Games like this are highly iterative. You try and build on the success of other titles. It's always going to be the way of things. Major innovation in this kind of genre doesn't seem to really make people all that happy. They want their Diablo 3 style game. They want their Torchlight style game. Titan Quest style game. Ignoring the fact that they're all very, very similar. You've got to give them what they want. Right, let's try out one of these skills here. Annoyingly enough, these skills can't be moved, uh, can't be used on the move, which is makes them feel a bit clunky. I don't really like that. Maybe that's something they need to look into. It was the same with... Ah, God damn it. It was the same with the phase run skill on my other version of the character. You couldn't use phase run until you actually stopped moving. I, I don't like that. I really, really don't. Again, it just breaks up the flow of the combat. So he is hoping they actually do something about that. But that was a look at the current state of Path of Exile. Once again, it's going to be a free-to-play game. So not a huge amount of excuse not to at least try the thing. My name's been Total Biscuit, taking a look at the brand new and final class, The Shadow. I'll see you next time.